evening let's all stand together take a hymnal aren't you glad we don't live in the northeast <laughs> yeah 449 449 we're dwelling in Beulah land brother Scott singing it just for you man far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling then I know the sins of earth he said on every hand Ouch and One hundred and forty-three, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Thank you, preacher. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. This is my song, praising my Savior. 
Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in the house of God. Lord, we sang that song, This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Lord, I, you've been so good to us. Uh, Lord, uh, better than we deserve. And Lord, when we can stand and sing that song, Lord, what a thrill it is in our hearts and our, in our souls to know, uh, Lord, that you've been with us. And then... Uh, Lord, dwelling in Beulah land, <laughs> man, I tell you, what a wonderful song that you had, the songwriter of old to write. Lord, I just pray tonight as we enter into your presence, Lord, we pray that you'd speak to our hearts, that you'd get us ready, Lord, and, uh, through the music tonight to, uh, to be ready to sing uh, the songs or to understand the message, Lord, that you've given to us. And what a great message, Lord, you've given us tonight. I've already preached it once today. And, Lord, I pray that you'd help me to do justice tonight to your word. And, uh, Lord, to encourage the folks tonight through the preaching of the word of God. Father, we pray especially tonight for those who are ill and unable to be here. Pray for Brother Lee, Lord, that you'd be with him as he recovers from the uh, surgery he had today. And, uh, Lord, that you'd uh, uh, quickly, Lord, clear him uh, of the anesthesia that uh, they gave him. And, uh, Lord, that his mind would return to him as quickly as possible as well. Uh, Lord, that you'd ease any pain that he might be in, uh, Lord, tonight. And, Lord, we just pray that your uh, precious hand would be upon him and around him and cradle him, Lord, to know, uh, Lord, your nearness and your closeness. I know, Brother Lee, if he weren't in the hospital tonight and, and he's uh, able, he'd be here in the house of God. So, Lord, I just pray that you'd uh, uh, honor his request tonight. And then, Father, uh, maybe there's some here who are working. Lord, I just pray your hand of mercy upon them. Uh, Lord, it should watch over and protect them there on the job site. And, uh, Lord, that uh, they'd have an opportunity tonight uh, to share the gospel with somebody uh, who is uh, a co-worker, Lord, that, that needs to know Jesus tonight. And then, Father, we just again pray uh, that you'd be with uh, Ms. Velda and her family, the loss and homegoing going of our mother. Uh, Lord, what a, a beautiful service we had today. Uh, Lord, such songs that were chosen that honored and lifted up the name of Christ and uh, Lord, the message that uh, came from her, uh, Lord, what a, a blessing it was to us today. Lord, I just pray that you'd uh, uh, be with them and let them know your nearness and closeness. Nestle up against them. Uh, Lord, cradle them in your arms as, you, as only you can do. Strengthen them tonight. Of course, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, it's a great blessing to have all of you. And uh, I'll tell you, I... I realize today how cold it can be out on the open prairie, and uh, we, it wasn't wintry. I mean, it was cold, but there was no precipitation, and uh, I've, I've learned the definition of wintry since Brother Kevin has been here, uh, but uh, uh, anyway, it's, uh, we got out there in that cemetery and right out there in that pavilion, and that wind's cutting through from the north, and there's nothing blocking it. I'm trying to get behind that little podium that they give you there, and it, it didn't block much, I'll tell you, at all, uh, but uh, we had such a great time today at that service, and, uh, and God was so gracious, and so 
uh, do pray for uh, Ms. Velda and her family uh, as they uh, uh, transition from uh, having their mother and uh, grandmother and great-grandmother and great-great-grandmother available. And now that uh, she's passed into heaven, uh, there's another prayer warrior uh, that's there. And so uh, we just pray that uh, God would bless them, help them, and strengthen them. Uh, as I mentioned in the prayer also, Brother Lee's still in the hospital and uh, just uh, had a, a minor surgery today, uh, but uh, hoping that this will help to ease the pain that he's in. Uh, do continue to pray for him. Uh, I know that uh, if, if he could have been here tonight, he'd have been here. And uh, so uh, do be in prayer for him. Uh, also continue to pray for uh, Miss Patty, uh, that you'd be with her, that the Lord would be with her. Help her to get on that transplant list uh, to be able to uh, get those transplants that she needs as well as to be able to get off the dialysis and uh, the um, um, insulin and all of that. Uh, we just pray that God would be good. He is good. He's gracious. And we do know he can just take the body and, and heal it and take care of it all. Uh, that's uh, the, what the great physician can do. Uh, but sometimes he chooses to uh, send us through the trials and the tests, uh, his glory and his name would be honored. So uh, continue to pray for her uh, as well as uh, there's other names on here. And I'm going to ask tonight, uh, if you would, if, you're, if you have someone on the list tonight uh, that God has answered the prayer and, and all, sometimes I get in the office and I think, now, you know, um, and sometimes I might remove a name and it shouldn't be removed or I leave a name on there past uh, the time it should be on there. Uh, if you will help me with that, because what I'm going to do is next week, I'm going to remove all the names that I don't know anything about. And so if, if you want somebody on that list to stay on that list, let me know, because I'm going to take it off. If, if uh, there's not a need there anymore, there's no need for us to continue uh, to lift up for God to be for that need. So uh, do uh, be in prayer about that and do ask me about that. Uh, our missionaries of the week are uh, Brother Brian and Jamie Cohn, and they are in Thailand. They are in Thailand, and they are, uh, they had, uh, he had posted on, uh, on Facebook and Twitter to uh, pray with them about finding a home. Uh, they did find a home that meets the needs that they have uh, financially as well as for the use of uh, being able to have uh, house churches and things like that. And uh, it's close to transportation that they'll need to be able to get uh, uh, to move about the city as well. And uh, uh, he posted a picture of Krispy Kreme donuts in Thailand. And I'm going, really? If you've never had a Krispy Kreme donut, I mean, you... I mean, I'm fixing to dismiss and go drive to Clear Lake and get me one. But uh, anyway, that, I mean, all the way in Thailand, they have Krispy Kreme donuts. And I said, I'm, I'm officially jealous. <laughs> but they had to travel all the way to Thailand to get a Krispy Kreme donut. But uh, they, Lord's a blessing, and they're, and they're doing well. Uh, so get, continue to pray for them, especially as, as all this transitions and uh, they're praying that they'll be able to use this opportunity of getting this house that they're getting to be able to uh, witness to the landlord uh, there and, and all. So just uh, be in prayer for them. In fact, be in prayer for all your missionaries. There's a list of them down here uh, that, uh, that you can go through and you can pray for and that God would uh, undertake for them. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a blessing to hear what God's doing uh, within uh, the hearts and lives of the missionaries as they do the work, and we have a part in that. For every soul that's saved, and you support the missions program, credit is going to your account. You know, we worry about tre treasuring stuff up here in the local banks, and I'll be honest with you, we could wake up tomorrow and those bank accounts could be useless. But that heavenly bank, <laughs> it's always going to be there. There's not going to be any rust or corrupted or anything like that. So those eternal rewards that we're laying up in heaven, uh, God's using that. And uh, Ms. Belden and I were talking today at the service. And uh, she's looking at the end of the service. We're looking into the casket there. And she goes, you know, she said, I'm so thankful for a Christian mama who taught me about Jesus. And uh, she said, you know, 
my family saved and uh, brothers, sisters, and just, you know. And she said, think of all of the fruit that mama gets to offer to Jesus. Because of her, because of her, where we were at today. And you need to think about that. That was a, a, a eye-opening thought right there. Thinking about what somebody or what effect you're going to have on somebody. What legacy you're going to have. When somebody's standing there looking in your casket and saying such things about you. Think about that. Let's pray again for these, these on the list again. Father, we just pray, uh, Lord, for Miss Patty. Lord, you'd be with her. We pray, Father, that you'd lift her up. Lord, we know that uh, uh, doctors have made decisions, and uh, they've made the decisions based upon human knowledge and human understanding. But, Lord, you're, you, you, you far surpass that. As I preach Sunday morning, Lord, uh, many of us put you in a, uh, in a little box and limit, Lord, what it is that, uh, that you can do, but Lord, you, you are limitless. You are infinite in wisdom and knowledge and opportunity and uh, omniscient and omnipresent and omnipotent and all of these uh, uh, areas, Lord, that we uh, try to uh, keep you boxed in. Lord, you're able to do something. And Lord, you created the body that we have. And Lord, you can touch that body. You can raise it up. You can lift it up. You can do uh, great and mighty things through, uh, through your creation. And so, Father, I pray for Patty, Lord, that you would uh, give her, uh, Lord, the desires of her heart. And Lord, she'd be able to get the transplants that she needs. And, Lord, that you would uh, honor, Lord, the, those transplants and help them, Lord, to continue to work and, uh, and uh, that your name would be glorified and honored. Father, we pray for the others whose names we've already called this evening and others on the list. And then, Father, we pray for our God is able offering. Lord, it's just a few weeks away uh, now and uh, a month away. And, Lord, we, we need, Lord, uh, folks to undertake and get behind. Uh, Lord, helping us with this, this special offering. Uh, Lord, we need to be able to, to bank some extra money there, not for, uh, for ease or for comfort, but, Lord, uh, that we could take care of the utilities and those types of things throughout the summer when the... Uh, when folks are traveling and away, and uh, Lord, we just need that. Uh, we need uh, uh, your touch, and we need your hand upon us in that area. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray for revival. Uh, Lord, America needs revival, but Lord, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, it begins with us. It begins right here at the Garth Road Baptist Church. It, it, it begins, Lord, individually within our hearts and our lives. And so, Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd help us to have revival, Lord, not a meeting, but, Lord, a desire in our hearts, Lord, to honor you, serve you, glorify your name. And then, Heavenly Father, we pray tonight, Lord, that uh, you, you would just uh, be with the cones, and, uh, Lord, you'd lift them up, that you'd encourage them, Lord, they're going to have to learn a, a new language. Uh, they're in a country, the country that you've placed them, uh, Lord, that is steeped with Buddhism and Hinduism, and, uh, Lord, they're... they're uh, they're ringing bells and lighting candles and, uh, and all to a false god. And Lord, they, they have the truth that they need to share uh, with this lost and dying nation. Lord, I just pray, uh, Lord, that you would uh, prosper them as they're there. Uh, Lord, not uh, financially, but Lord, with the souls of men and women and children who come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Father, help us, Lord, to be reminded every single day Lord, of the, of the hearts that need to be saved and the lives that need to be cha saved. And, and Lord, that you know, we have a part in that as we uh, partner together in, in, uh, in, in supporting our missions program. But Lord, we have a community around us of some 70 to 90,000 uh, folks that, uh, that need to hear the gospel also. And Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to be faithful to you. Bless again this service tonight. We'll give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm glad he wasn't praying to me, because all I was thinking about was Krispy Kreme donuts. My mouth's watering. There's not one close, so I'm going to have to take a plane ride to get one. Praise God.
Amen. Let's stand together. Take that hymnal 301. We'll sing the first and the last. Have our ushers get ready to come to receive the offering. 301 sweet hour of prayer.
fix it. Anyway, we're going to have a ministry involvement night, and uh, that meeting will be on uh, Monday evening, February the 24th, and uh, it will be uh, probably around 7 o'clock in the evening. There's no time on here, but uh, we'll do that. We're going to charge $3 a person to kind of help us with buying the, uh, the food so that we can do that. Uh, and there's a sheet, uh, four do- four-year-olds and up is who it's for. Okay, four-year-olds and up. I'm reading this, I'm going, okay, just so I understand that. Yeah, four years and up, there will be a charge, but for those under four years, there will not be a charge. That's what this means. Okay. And uh, Brother brother Kevin's going to have this sheet in the foyer after the, um, the service. For the, yeah. <laughs> and so if you would, uh, uh, if you're interested in coming, helping us with uh, some involvement in the ministry, we've got several things we'd like to share with you. And... Uh, uh, so if you would uh, make plans to be there, uh, we would appreciate it. If you receive the offering this evening, I remind you uh, every Wednesday night, the offering is to help us to retire the debt uh, on the buildings that we have, and uh, we uh, would like to get that taken care of as quickly as possible. And so as, as you give, uh, pray that the Lord would multiply the gift uh, abundantly above all that we could ask or think and get that taken care of as quickly as possible. If you bow for prayer, uh, Brother Kurt, you lead us in prayer, please. Dear Lord God, thank you that once again we had this opportunity to come into your house and to hear your word. I think about our missionaries that are in Thailand, that uh, they have to uh, take and find a home that's big enough so that they can invite people over because there's no churches there. There's no beautiful buildings like you've given us here. I uh, saw on Facebook today a, a, a place where they have a building that has no doors, it has no windows, it barely has a roof and walls. But that's the place that they go to to corporately worship you. That's their church building. Lord, we have a beautiful building with air conditioning, with heat, with carpet, with comfortable chairs that you have given us. I'm so thankful that we get to come here and to hear your word. And I pray that you please burden our hearts with the necessity that we have to pay off this building so that it's not taken away from us or we spend even more money uh, just trying to make basic payments. We need to get this paid off. I ask you, please take care of that, Lord. Please uh, just get the money in there so we can pay it off and then start expanding so that we can uh, reach this community even more with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I ask you, please fill Brother Jim full of the Holy Spirit tonight. Please give him the words we need to hear and give us, as I often pray, ears to hear and a heart receptive to your word that we leave here closer to you than when we came. And we all say it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord. We ask these not for our glory or for the glory of the pastor or glory of Garth Road Baptist Church, but for the glory of the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
world. He just said that he will provide. He said every need supplied. Every need he supplied. There is healing, cleansing, He's given, how would I decide? For after he saved me, I just have to say that every need he supplies. We'll take your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, and turn to Psalm 43, Psalm 43, <coughs> Psalm 43. While you're turning there, let me kind of give you uh, an introduction as to why we're here tonight and kind of help you uh, to maybe understand uh, a little bit about uh, the message behind the message here. Mrs. Velda's uh, mother uh, was taken to the emergency room, and then uh, she was moved into hospice, and uh, she was basically non-responsive. Um, she was not speaking. She was not responding to uh, any stimulus at that point in time, and usually that indicates that there's, it, the time is short. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, she just rallied. I mean, she woke up. She started talking. And uh, in her bed, uh, she called for her Bible. And uh, they brought her her Bible, and uh, they a she asked to open it to Psalm 43. And she sat there and, and in her bed, and she went down, and she just kind of followed through Psalm 43 uh, and read it. And that impressed the family. Why Psalm 43? I mean, Psalm 23, maybe she made a mistake. And they were kind of, you know, when Ms. Velda called me, she, said, she told me about this. She said, you know, uh, Mama rallied, and she woke up, and she called for a Bible, and she asked us to turn to Psalm 43, and, and she read it. She went down it with her finger and, and all of that. She made no comment to us at all, and we didn't really understand why Psalm 43 and uh, she, but they had their Bible open at the at the funeral home to Psalm 43, and uh, and there was not really a, uh, a a connection there as far as they were concerned. And so I started reading Psalm 43, and I thought, well, you know, if this was important, and this was something that she had uh, uh, wanted to read on that particular day, at that particular time, knowing her time was short. Why she chose Psalm 43, I want to know. And so I began to read through it, and I read Psalm 43 about 10 or 12 times last night, and uh, I, I read it again this morning, and uh, I do believe that she had a message. Now, the Bible says, He being dead yet speaketh. 
And I shared with the funeral home this morning, or those at the funeral this morning, that, you know, I do believe that when a person comes to the place of, of death, that their vision is opened. We, they, they see things that we don't see. They understand things that we don't understand. And, I, you know, I'm just, this is just conjecture. I mean, I have no biblical basis for what I'm about to say, but uh, I, I think probably in my mind, and I, and I told him at the funeral home, I said, you know, my people will tell you, I think weird thoughts. And I think, and, and I got a few amens out of that, and, 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 you know, so... Uh, you know, we, we need to understand that where I'm coming from here, uh, but just as a preface of this, is, uh, I used to go to Allenbrook Nursing Home as a, uh, and do a Bible study there every week. I did that for about three and a half years, and uh, there was a, a, a lady there. Many of you may have known her if you've been from Baytown for a long time. Her name was Jimmy Jesse, and she uh, owned the uh, Jesse's uh, uh, florist here in Baytown uh, on Gulf Street, right, right Pierce Street, right behind uh, the old bank there, I believe it was, maybe Gulf, I don't know, somewhere in that area. If you're not from Baytown, you don't know where it is anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, she had a florist there, and she was in the nursing home. She was a very beautiful elderly lady and a very, had a very, very sweet, sweet spirit. And uh, she came to my Bible study every week, and she just had a, uh, was just so kind and, and gracious and always complimented the message. And uh, uh, one day, she, she wasn't there, and uh, so I went to her room to have prayer with her, and uh, she was uh, uh, right at the point of, of death, uh, but she was still hanging in there, and the family was there, and uh, we just had a good time visiting with her. And then I left, and for, uh, for that particular time, I uh, had gone to Mississippi as a, uh, on a vacation, and while I was there, she passed away. Now, I had the phone number for the, one of the daughters, and I called to check on her and see how she was doing, and, and she called me, and she said, Mama passed away. And uh, I just got back in time to go to the funeral home. I think it was at Earthman's, and uh, so I went down there, and they were standing around the casket, the two daughters, and uh, they were looking in the casket and, and talking, and I, I went up to speak to them, and uh, they said, We've got a story to tell you. And I said, I love stories. <laughs> I love to tell stories, but I love stories. And on that particular day that she passed away, she was sitting Indian style in the middle of her bed. And uh, she was looking up into heaven, and she was talking to grandma and grandpa and, and aunts and uncles and those that had passed on um, before her. And she was talking to her daughters and said, well, you see, there's so-and-so. And, and she was, you know, in a moment, she looked up into heaven, and she stopped. And she said, yes, sir. And she laid down on the bed. And she looked at both daughters and she said, I'm going home. And immediately she passed from this life into the arms of Jesus. In this situation, this is not the, the same situation that, uh, uh, that Miss Walker had, but I, I, she was non-responsive. But I think she rallied there. Maybe she was contemplating with the Lord or something about uh, this, this transition. And maybe that she wanted to give her family and her friends something to hold on to. Something to, uh, to, to grasp and, and say there is a God in heaven and this is what he wants you to know. As we open the psalm, let me read it to you. It's just five verses, but notice how it begins. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast my, me off? Why go I mourning uh, because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out thy light and thy truth, and, them, uh, uh, and then lead me uh, and Excuse me, let me go back there. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy habitation or to thy tabernacle. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. And upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? 
hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. I want to call your attention back to a phrase in verse number three, and notice what it says, O send out thy light and thy truth. And the message that I brought this, this morning to them was this, God is my light and truth. Amen. Let's pray it. Father, we bow before you this evening. We ask again, Lord, uh, we, we've prayed for a number of things tonight, but Lord, I, I pray especially that you would use this message again, Lord, to speak to our hearts, to encourage us, to, uh, to, uh, to strengthen us, Lord, in our faith in you, to, uh, to help us to see, uh, Lord, that there is a, a life beyond this, uh, uh, this menial uh, life that we live, this menial existence that we have, uh, but, Lord, that there's a, a God in heaven uh, that cares about the, uh, the, the, the individual, and, and wants to have a personal relationship with them and, and wants to lead them into the places uh, that you could lead us, Lord, to, uh, beyond, uh, Lord, our comprehension and the things that we understand. Lord, I pray that you would fill me again with our Holy Spirit and with power. And as I bring the message, Lord, that you'd use the Holy Spirit to speak to the hearts. For it's in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. As we look at this, he says, Oh, send thy light and thy truth. Now, we know the, the first creative act of God in Genesis chapter number one was light. You notice that it says, and God said, let there be light. It's interesting to, under, to, to note there's a, a commercial on TV that's promoting a, a, a vitamin for, for a healthy eye. But in that commercial, it, it says that uh, the, the natural human eye can see a candle uh, flicker in the dark at a distance of 10 miles. Wow. Now that, in and of itself, is amazing. But you see, what light does is it dispels darkness. Light dispels darkness. When there is light, there is no darkness. In fact, darkness does not exist because of light. And what the psalmist says, God, I want you to send thy light. We sing the song, send the light, send the light, send the blessed gospel light. We're saying we want the, the light of God. Now, the light of God represents revelation. And God has given us the revelation of himself in the word of God. He has given us, he has revealed himself to us through the word of God. Last night I didn't have the privilege, I, I didn't get to watch the uh, debate between Ken Ham and, uh, and Bill Nye, the science guy, understand that Ken Ham put him in his place and, and, and just uh, ate his lunch, but the truth is, is that when you bring out the light and you bring out the truth, there's nothing else needed. And from what I understand, Ken Ham just kept saying, well, it's in the Bible. <laughs> what the Bible says, the Bible's truth I mean, it just keeps nailing that, and, and it says on AOL, I think it was in the news thing, Bill Nye denies the Bible. Hello? <laughs> he believes in evolution. He believes that, 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 that we created, came out of some uh, primordial uh, ooze out there somewhere. But you see, what God has done is God has revealed himself. He has given us light. But not only has he given us light, he has... Here I go again. I'm there. There you go. Anyway, the Bible reveals that God is true. First John chapter five, or chapter one, verse five says, God, "Let God be true, and every man a liar." 
God is true. Jesus in John 17, 17 said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so when we look at the, the word of God, the psalmist says, Lord, send thy truth, thy light, and thy truth. Now, if that's all he said, that would be enough. But notice the, the, the progression here. If you look at verse number one, he says, judge me, O God. Now, the word judge there, when we look at that word judge, we think, well, uh, I, I'm asking God to, to judge me. Now, the Bible says that we are to examine ourselves. The psalmist says, search me, O God, and know my heart. And so uh, we're, we're talking about a, a different type of judgment here. We're not talking about judge me and put me in hell, judge me and, uh, for my wickedness and my sin. No, we're talking about examination. We're, talking about, no, we're not talking about examination. We're talking about vindication here. Because when you look at what he says here, judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation, Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. What the psalmist is saying, God, you need to vindicate me. You see, there's a lot of people out there, people that you know, they say, well, they're just a holy joke. All they are is a Bible thumper. All they are is holy rollers. And they have all kinds of names for Christians. They want to look down their nose at us. They want to kick us in the pants. They want to uh, uh, try to make us look like fools and idiots. And the truth is... <laughs> God's going to vindicate us one day anyway. You see, the, 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 the great tribulation of God is not about judging wickedness and sin, which is, is what it's going to do, but it's going to let those that, that are going through that tribulation period of time realize that they have rejected a living God. And we will be vindicated. When we come with Jesus on those white horses... <laughs> Without drawing, a, without drawing a sword, without anything. And Jesus continually, I mean, completely annihilates the armies of, uh, of this world. We will be vindicated. But the psalmist says here, vindicate me. Notice what he says in verse number two. He says, for thou art the God of my strength. Now the strength here is, is the strength that we get from or that we gain from somebody who can give us that strength. In fact, uh, the, the, word, the, the word is translated several different ways uh, in the Old Testament. It is, it is to uh, place safe, uh, a place of safety. It is a fortress. It is protection. It is refuge. You see, the, the psalmist says, that God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. You see, what I, what, I, what I think about, when I think about this strength here, and when I think about this protective here, uh, this place of safety here, is a mother's arms. You see, when, when, when you're in trouble, it, when you were a child, you may remember this, uh, when, if you had a bad dream, where did you run? You ran to mama. When, when, when you fell and, and you skinned your knee and, uh, and, and you needed comfort and help, where, where did you go? You went to mama. When you were sick and, 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 and throwing up your toenails and you had fever and you, and, and, you, and you, where did you go? You went to mama. Well, the truth is, is that when God is our refuge and strength, he, he is our strength. He's the one that, that, that cradles us. He's the one that helps us. He's the one that gives us what we need. And notice what the psalmist said. He said, oh, Lord, he said, uh, for thou art the God of my strength. The God of my strength. I mean, folks, the, the problem is in our daily lives is we're trying to depend upon me. But when, when you're sick and you're laying in the, flat, uh, in the bed flat of your back, you ain't doing too good. You need somebody else. You need someone else, and you need the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, when you go to the doctor and they use that C word... Nobody wants to hear that word. You need some strength. When you go to the doctor and they say, you're a diabetic, <laughs> your sugar's 600, like Brother Kurt. <laughs> he went to the doctor. What did you go to the doctor for? Kidney stone. They said, forget the kidney stone. <laughs> your, 
Blood sugar, 600. I mean, trim, curt, diabetic. I mean, look at me, fat Jim, <laughs> not diabetic. It doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, why? I mean, but when you go there and you, I need some help. You see, we need that strength. But if we, if we go down to verse number three and we ask God to send light and truth, there's some statements there that follow that that should encourage us to understand that there is a God in heaven, that there is light, there is the revelation of God, and there is the truth of God, and the light and the truth is what's going to sustain us throughout the problems and the ills and the difficulties of our life. Right. Notice what the, the prayer is. Notice what the statement is. He, says, oh, he said, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them lead me. What are we asking to be led by? God's light and God's truth. God's revelation and God's truth. You see, too many times we're trying in our, within ourselves to, to have the answers. We're trying to come up with the answers. The answer's right here. God has revealed it. You see, the problem with Bill Nye is he hasn't come to the light yet. You remember what Jesus told him in John chapter number 3? Nicodemus comes to, to Jesus by night. And Jesus begins to speak to him. And Jesus tells him, you must be born again. You must be born again. God, Jesus was revealing to him a truth. He was giving him light. And the light that he was giving him is that you must be born again. And Nicodemus rebelled against that. He said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's an impossibility. Um, can a man enter into his mother's room the second time and be birthed again? That's not going to happen. Jesus said, no, you missed the point. Are you, are you a, a ruler of Israel and you don't know these things? You, you must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit. You've got to have a natural birth and a spiritual birth. And the spiritual birth is what you need. He goes to John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or go to hell but have everlasting life. He goes on further in that chapter and he goes, Now, <laughs> men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. You see... The dens of iniquity are dark dens. They're, they're not well lit. They're, they're, I mean, you don't go into a beer joint, and I haven't been in one in over 40 plus years, but you don't go in, in a beer joint with light like this. It's dim. It's dark. For a purpose. Because people don't want their sins to be revealed. They don't want the, uh, the, 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 everybody to see who's there. They're out there romancing somebody else's uh, husband or somebody else's wife. They're out there doing things within the, uh, within the confines of that darkness that, that they find comfort in, but when, when the light comes, they don't like that. That's why they crucified Jesus, because he brought the light to them. And they love darkness rather than light. You see... But if we're going to use the light and the, and the truth, we, we should allow them to lead us in the right direction. That's what the psalmist is asking for. Lead me in the truth. Lead me in the light of God because that's the only place we have help. That's the only place we have strength. That's the only place that we have uh, the ability to know what God wants of us. And so the psalmist says, lead me, lead me in them. Let them lead me. There's too many that's being led astray. They're, they're, they're moved by every wind of doctrine. I'm amazed at, 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 the, at the number of folks that started out at the Garth Road Baptist Church that are now in charismatic churches, that are now in Jehovah's Witnesses churches, 
that are now in Mormon churches. You go, they left this church and went, yeah. You know why? Because they got involved and got away from the truth. They started dating some old, some old boy that, uh, that uh, uh, wasn't a Baptist, that wasn't sold out to God. They, they said, well, it doesn't matter. I'll change them. No, they, it, that doesn't work. You, you don't change somebody from what they are to something else. It, it rarely works. These young girls that, that date this old guy, that he, he's, he's awful. Drugs and smokes and, and cusses and all. Well, when I, we get married, it is, it's not going to change. And I know many a broken-hearted young lady and, 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 and woman who has married somebody like that that has gone through years of torturous uh, abuse because I think I can change him. No, you, you don't change him. He will either change you or drag you down. It, it, it don't work that way. But you see, when you're led in the truth, you need to go with that truth. You need to follow that truth. You, you need to, when you're listening to Marilyn Hickey, which you shouldn't be doing, you ought to be getting out the Bible and, and comparing what she's saying to the Word of God, and you should know within a short order, she's not telling the truth. If you sit there in your living room and watch Joel Osteen, and, and, and you want to find... You compare what he says to the Word of God, I guarantee you, you're going to come to the revelation, he's not telling the truth. You want to listen to Ken Copeland or, or, or Josh Meyer or whoever you want to listen to on the radio, well, I just really love their teaching. Let me tell you something, if it don't line up with this, you don't need to listen to them. Because what, they, what you listen to will affect you. Let me say that again. What you listen to will affect you. Because then you'll come to the place, well, you know, yeah, that's not exactly true, but there's some truth to it. See, some truth is not the truth. <laughs> we, we need to get out of this idea, well, there's some truth in this, so it must be all right. No. Jehovah's Witnesses have some truth. <laughs> but they're leading the people to hell. And the Mormons have some truth. But they're leading people to hell. And the charismatics have some truth, but they're leading people to hell. You see, we, we, we need to understand something. Some truth is not the truth. Stay away from it. Don't associate it with... I mean, I'll be honest with you. If Benny Hinn comes to, Bay, to Houston, to Baytown, to, to anywhere, in the, I'm not going to listen to him. Anybody who, who, all I can call it is heresy, is to take the Holy Spirit and throw him across the room, that is not biblical. And blowing his bad breath on people, and that, that is not biblical. But you'd be surprised at the number of Baptists that will go to hear him. You'd be surprised at the number of people that will swoon over that and give their money to that. Folks, lead me in thy truth. Amen. Lead me in thy truth. Not only does he say, lead me to thy truth, but notice what he says. Now, y'all are getting a little more than what they got at the funeral, believe me. <laughs> I didn't get in here with a funeral. Brother Sexton and Miss Sexton were sitting there. They, they'll tell you. I, I didn't go there, did I, Brother Sexton? So, now, notice what he said. He says, now, he says, let them lead me. What lead me? The, truth, the light and truth. Number two, let them bring me unto thy holy hill. We sang the song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> we got it to the second verse, or third verse, I'm sorry. And from Mount Pisgah's lofty height, I view my home and take my flight. And everybody's singing it, but nobody knows where Mount Pisgah is. They don't know what it means. They don't know the revelation behind it. They don't know the truth behind it. But, I mean, now, I kind of stepped aside and, and kind of did a little sermonizing here this morning because what it actually is talking about is to, uh, to Mount Zion. It's, it's talking about the holy hill. It's talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about the place of worship. 
but folks, let me, let me kind of bring it in to you. The hill of Calvary. What we need, when we have light and we have revelation, we have truth, that light and that truth should lead us to one place. Amen. And that's the foot of the cross. That's where we need to be. Amen. You see, nobody's going to get into heaven who has not been to the foot of the cross. Right. Nobody's getting into the pearly gates by, by their good works, their good deeds, their, right. uh, their motivations. It, it, it's not going to help. It's only by going to the foot of the cross. Jesus, I remind you, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, they don't like that. Well, there's, there, there's so many different ways. <laughs> no, there's only one way. And God is the author of that way. And that way began before the foundations of the world. And we need to understand something. There's not a, a Baptist way into heaven. You say, well, wait a minute, you're, you're Baptist. Yeah, I'm Baptist, but not because that's going to get me into heaven. I'm a Baptist because I believe the Baptists line up more with this book than any other denomination. But believe me, there, I mean, hold on. Don't, don't, don't let me blow your mind. But I believe there will be Catholics in heaven. Yes, sir. Not because of what the Catholic Church taught, but because of what they believed right. about this book. Right. And I do believe that there will be Presbyterians in heaven. And I do believe that there will be Methodists in heaven. And I do believe that there will be Mormons in heaven. And I do believe that there will be Buddhists in heaven because they, 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 they came to the knowledge of the truth. And they came to the hill of Calvary and they poured out their hearts and they received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. That's why they're in heaven. And that's the only reason. He says, lead me. Let them lead me. Let, me, let, let them get me to the, to the thy holy hill. But notice what he says thirdly. He says, and uh, to thy tabernacle. Now, in the Old Testament, God gave Moses the tabernacle. And, 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 he, and I don't have time to, tonight to go into the, uh, to the beaver skins and to all of those uh, things and, and why they're there and all the colorations and, and why the tatches and the latches and, the, and, and all of those. I don't have, all, have time to go into all of that. But let me just tell you this that when they set the tabernacle up, before, that they, uh, before they had the tabernacle, when they came out of Egyptian bondage, that God led them in a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, all they had to do was look up and there was God. But when they got that tabernacle built to the specifications that God had given to Moses, and he gave the men uh, the, the abilities to build and to make what it was that they, that they made. And then they came in and they set that tabernacle up and they dedicated that tabernacle that, they, that God descended upon that tabernacle and, and they could not go in it because God was there. And when God raised up off of that tabernacle, that was their sign. You need to move to the next place. And God led them in that cloud, in that pillar of fire by night. But when the tabernacle was reset, he came down. He, he was there. Now, folks, let me tell you something. If you're going to a church that believes in the power of God, in the Holy Spirit of God, and the preaching of the Word of God, and God is there, this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be. This is the place of worship. It, it, it is not coming in here and going, well, you know, I, I just don't find God here. If you don't find God here, then you need to go somewhere else. Because if God doesn't show up at the Garth Road Baptist Church, if his presence is not here, then, then we don't need to be having the Garth Road Baptist Church. We just as well go down to Capital Bank and say, we're not going to pay the note on here. You get $2.5 million worth of property and buildings all for yourself. We don't want it anymore because it's useless. If we're not going to do what God has instructed us to do in the power of the Spirit of God. When you come through that door and you come into this building, you ought to know that God is here. You ought to know that. And I've been in some churches where God wasn't there. We need to understand something. That when we come into the house of God, we don't come in here for our own benefit. We come in here to worship God. 
We come to lay ourselves at His feet. We come to give ourselves to Him. That's the purpose. And so notice what he, how, he termino, how the terminology is. He said, let them lead me, the, what is leading me, the light and the truth, and let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. We need to come to the place that we're worshiping God. Now, people tell me all the time, well, you know, preacher, I don't, you don't have to go to church to go to heaven. Well, yeah, you're right about that. These four walls have nothing. Back in the old days, they used, to, they used to worship out in the middle of a, of a pasture somewhere. Yes, sir. They used to cut down logs and make benches. Right. They, they used to put up tents and put hay in them. And they said, that's our church. Well, that's where they met to worship. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. It, it doesn't matter about the edifice. It doesn't matter about the buildings, the carpet, the chairs, the air conditioning, or nothing about that. That is not why we come here. And yeah, you, can, you don't have to come to church to worship, but if you're a child of God, you want to go where God's at. And the people that tell me I worship at home, I'm very suspect. Because <laughs> most of them are going to sleep till noon. They're going to do their own thing. Well, that's my only day of rest. <laughs> You know what the Bible says? We're supposed to use it for a day of rest. No, it was a Sabbath day. And why were they there to worship God? You see, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I mean, we, the purpose and the plan of God. You know, drunks go to the beer joint. Drug addicts go to the drug dens. Shopaholics go to Walmart. Sorry, I stepped on a few toes there. Those wanting to buy a car, go to, the, go to the GMC dealership and see Brother Fred. I mean, folks, if you're going to serve God and you're going to honor God, you go to the place where God is at. And that's what this psalmist is saying. Hey, I want to go to where God's at. Now, notice down to the, to the next verse. I'm, I've run out of time, but we're going to do it anyway. Then, notice this, I will go unto the altar of God. I'll go to the altar of God. Every, every service, I, I, I give an invitation. And there's, there, there's three reasons to go to the altar at the end of every service. Well, I don't, I don't see a need to go. Well, Number one is you got something from God, and God talked to you. You, you ought, to go to, ought to go to the altar. <laughs> Thanking him for that. Right. See, not everybody that goes to the altar is coming down here to get saved. Right. Ought to be, I mean, there should be some praise. That's what the altar's for. Yes, sir. Number two, it because God didn't talk to you. Yeah. I, I, I need to find out why God didn't speak to me tonight. Yes, sir. And number three, I want to meet that God that he talked about tonight. Right. You see, that's why we have an altar. There's a lot of churches that go, well, we don't do that anymore. That's just so uh, passe. You know? No. It, 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 it's what it is. <laughs> it's where people get right with God. I, I was talking to somebody the other day and said, man, you know, we, we had a service and, and we had somebody go to the altar. Like in shock. I'm going, I'm shocked that people don't go to the altar. You see, there's a purpose for the altar. He says, then I will go to the altar of God. Notice that he, he, he says then, he said, um, uh, unto God my exceeding joy. You see, God ought to be your exceeding joy. He's there to give you joy above and beyond what you could ask or think. There ought to be joy in serving Jesus. Amen. I told people in the service today, I said, you think this is new? <laughs> no. I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. I'm excited about God. I'm excited about preaching the word of God. I'm excited for what Jesus has done for me. He saved me on August the 20th of 1972, and I ain't got over it yet. 
I had some guys getting saved in, in, in church when, as a Mississippi, and, and, uh, and the, somebody went to the preacher and said, man, these guys are too, are too uh, uh, ambitious, and they're, and, and they're too exuberant. We need to rein them in. And the preacher looked at him and said, well, we got enough wet blankets to put them out, so... You ought to be excited about the things of God. I mean, you know why people aren't saved every week in our service? I mean, a preacher friend of mine, uh, Brother uh, Banks over in, in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, had 14 saved last week. Between Sunday and Sunday, 14 saved. Brother Harvey said, he's on cloud nine. I said, I'd be on cloud 20. I mean, I wouldn't be coming down for a long time. I remember the days in Garth Road Baptist Church when, when there was a line across the auditorium. In fact, I remember the day that Brother Ed passed away on, uh, in October, on October the 9th, I think it was, of, uh, of 12, 2005. I mean, we had a number of folks that came and got saved, and we, we had people that were joining the church, and all this is going on, uh, on on that day, and he's watching from heaven. The angels were rejoicing in heaven. What happened? What happened? We ought to be thrilled about that. We ought to be excited about that. I mean, when folks come down and get saved, we ought to be shouting. Amen. When folks get right with God, we ought to be shouting. Amen. Well, that, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to wait until I find out if they really mean it or not. <laughs> You're not the judge. You don't get to judge whether they mean it or not. But they ought to feel like, that, man, this is the place to be. This is, a, this is the exciting place. This is the thrilling place. Hey, I, I haven't been in church where, 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 where that, there was that much excitement. I mean, I've been to ball games where they were excited and shouting and all. But, man, in a church, man, I hadn't seen that. And, I mean, well, we can't do that because we're Baptist. And, and, and Baptists don't do that. Folks, I, w I had a shout before I was Baptist. The, the, shout, the Baptists were shouting before the Charismatics even came on the scene. Charismatics didn't come on the scenes until the late 1800s. Baptists were shouting a long time before that. I think they were shouting in Antioch, in Ephesus, Galatia. Philippi. You know, Baptists go back that far. Well, John was a Baptist. I'm sure we do. You see, notice, he says, we went to the altar of God, and, and then he's my exceeding joy. And then he says, upon the harp, will I praise thee, O God, my God. Where's the praise? We sing songs, we have no clue what the meaning of them is. But the song leader said, turn to page such, such, we're turn to such, such, and we're going to sing. I mean, when I led to singing, we always turned to hymn number. So and so. Not page, hymn. We, 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 we sing hymns. Why do we sing hymns? Because it says in Ephesians that we are to, to sing hymn, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And by the way, and I won't go there, I don't have time. She'll be coming around the mountain, ain't a Christian song. Anyway, I digress. Our purpose and our plan. The, the last verse is really the, is, is the key here. Notice this, why art thou cast down, O my soul? If, if, if God has given me light and truth, if, if I'm being led in the truth and I'm going to the holy hill and I'm going to the tabernacles of God and I'm singing praises and, 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 and I mean, there's exceeding joy. Why am I cast down? Why am I depressed? Why am I discouraged? It's all God. It's all him. Notice, if you will, the, the second thing. He said, and why art thou disquiet, disquieted within me? 
That word disquieted means uh, uh, in a stir, in a stew, uh, anxious. My wife sings a song. I, I love her to sing the song. I get her to sing it once in a while. All my anxieties, all my care, take it to Jesus and leave it there. Amen. I'm reading a book by Paul Chapel right now called The Bur Burden Bearer. And it's an allegory. It's a, it, it's a book written, uh, but it talks about the uh, carrier. And he, all he's doing is he just keeps, he's got the burden bearer, the Lord Jesus Christ, but he keeps carrying his burdens everywhere he goes. The premise is get rid of the, the burdens. Put them up on the one that, that, that has better ability to carry on them than you do. But notice that. He says, closing, he says, hope thou in God. For I shall praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. So I told the folks at the, uh, at the funeral home today, I said, you know, what Miss Walker was trying to tell y'all is this. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Yeah. I, got, I got this under control. <laughs> God's got this under control. I am put this in him. And what you need to do is you need to go to Psalm 43, and you need to look and see what he said, and you need to apply that to your life so that you, when you come to this place in your life, you can praise God. Amen. And you can glorify God. You see... Some may not have a personal relationship with the Lord. You need to have that personal relationship. You need the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Some may be under the circumstances. Get out from underneath the circumstances and put it on the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow the light and the truth to lead you and to guide you into, into what He wants for you. And God will make Himself known in your heart and in your life. There was a specific day that Miss Walker wrote in her Bible. The date was January the 18th, 1998. I remember that day. She came to church. We were down the street. Brother Ed was, was the pastor at that time. And she walked the aisle and she said, I want to I, I'm, I want to rededicate my life anew and afresh. And she wrote the date, January the 1st, or 18th, 1998. I am sure my name is written in the book of life. Amen. Are you sure your name's written in the book of life? If not, you need to make sure. If you're, having, if you're having problems being led in the truth, if you're having problems worshiping, if you're having problems, hey, that's what the altar's for. Yes, sir. Use it. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the thrill it is to be in your house tonight, and Lord, for what you've done for us, for what you've given us. And Lord, if, if, if we could do anything tonight, Lord, that would, would set the portals of heaven ringing with joy and praise, it would be that those of us that are here tonight at the Garth Road Baptist Church would say, God, I need you. Maybe as a personal Savior, maybe as a personal God. Lord, I want to come and thank you for your blessings in my life. Or, Lord, I want to come and lay my sins upon the altar and ask you to forgive me. And I repent and I... I turn, Lord, to serve you and honor you. Lord, maybe there's some discouragement. Maybe there's some, uh, some uh, uh, disappointments. But, Lord, we can all place those on you tonight. Speak to our hearts is our prayer in Jesus' name.